we have to think of ourselves as artists. And it's like Picasso said, good artists copy, great artists steal. This is who we wanted to steal from, Xerox. They were secretly developing all this amazing stuff like the mouse and the graphics on the screen instead of just a bunch of numbers. But when those California engineers had to go to New York and present all this neat stuff to the Xerox brass, those executives didn't begin to understand what they were looking at. Never mind a mouse, it was like someone dumped a dead rat on the boardroom table. <laughs> you want Xerox to consider something called a mouse? See, this is where Steve was a genius. Because he persuaded Xerox's head office into showing us all this incredible stuff their California guys had developed. I'm telling you, it was making their people absolutely nuts. Oh, God. You know, I felt like one of the Mongol hordes coming to loot and plunder a bunch of defenseless villagers. No, no, no. This is insane. We'd just be handing him everything. I mean, we created the mouse and all the rest of it, and now these idiots in New York want to show it all to Steve Jobs. I won't do it. Hi. I'm Steve Jobs. I need you to answer some other questions about the stuff you've invented, the graphic interface. It's not going to hurt. That's what you think. What do you want to know? How does it Okay, now what I just want to say is it's an integer or is it compound? I don't know. Is your operating system converted to executable codes? I got it. I got it, Steve. I got it. Joe, what does someone understand? What is the middle? Neat, right? Click, you're there. Click, you're somewhere else. This graphic interface stuff was like a miracle back then, and we got it. Steve got it from Xerox, who just turned it all over for us to fool with. Like, like rich people giving junky old stuff to the Salvation Army. Only the junk turns out to be a Rembrandt, about a hundred billion dollar head start on everyone else. Apple was making tons of money. I, it was great. And of course, I, I, I sort of lost my mind. I mean, it was all fun and games. I started buying really expensive toys. <laughs> it was me with my own plane. Only problem was maybe I wasn't as good a pilot as I thought I was. I mean, it's one thing when computers crash, but planes, you don't want to know. Hey, Steve. Are you just getting here? You know, I was just outside talking to the doctor. You don't remember us talking 10 minutes ago? We talked? Yeah. Hey, my hard disk crashed. Uh -huh. A computer guy with memory problems. <laughs> it's the weirdest thing, because you know there's a part of your life that's there, only you don't know about it. It makes you crazy. you to extend my life until you build more equity in your home or pay down the loan there's nothing i can do my business is booming unfortunately that's immaterial wow i've got 13 locations in nine states it's a home equity loan then give me a business loan these 13 locations you own them me personally it's your business correct you own it i'm the head of franchising i'm the one behind this growth well, that's all well and good but you need assets have you been to a McDonald's? Because we've got three right here in the Chicago land area. You should come by and take them both. No, I would love to give you a tour, give you a better sense of what I'm talking about. Thank you. Mr. Kroc. Can I help you? No, but perhaps I can help you. Harry Sonneborn, nice to meet you. Now, 
Thanks. We're very happy with our current supplier. <laughs> I'm not here to sell you ice cream. What the hell do you want? I caught a bit of your conversation back there. Sounds like you're having financial troubles. Why don't you mind your own business? I'm a great admirer of your establishment. Thank you. I eat lunch at your Waukegan location at least twice a week. Always a fantastic crowd. Your point being? Mr. Kroc, if you're not making money hand over fist, something's terribly wrong. June, grab the ledger, would you? Come on in the office, Harry. So, to summarize, you have a minuscule revenue stream, no cash reserves, and an albatross of a contract that requires you to go through a slow approval process to enact changes, if they're approved at all, which they never are. Am I missing anything? I about sums it up. Tell me about the land. The land. The land, the buildings, how that whole aspect of it works. Oh, pretty simple, really. Franchisee finds a piece of land he likes, gets a lease, usually 20 years, uh, takes out a construction loan, throws out the building, and off he goes. So the operator selects the site. Yeah. He picks the property. Right. You provide the training, the system, the operational know-how, and he's responsible for the rest. Mm, is there a problem? A big one. You don't seem to realize what business you're in. You're not in the burger business. You're in the real estate business. You don't build an empire off a 1.4% cut of a 15 cent hamburger. You build it by owning the land upon which that burger is cooked. What you ought to be doing is buying up plots of land, then turning around and leasing said plots to franchisees, who as a condition of their deal should be permitted to lease from you and you alone. This will provide you with two things. One, a steady upfront revenue stream. Money flows in before the first stake is in the ground. Two, greater capital for expansion, which in turn fuels further land acquisition which in turn fuels further expansion, and so on, and so on. Land. That's where the money is. And more than that, control. Control over the franchisee. Fail to uphold quality standards, you cancel their lease. Control over Dick and Mac. End result? You'll have the banks and the franchisees in the palm of your hand. If I were to do this, uh, the brothers, they uh, effectively would be. Yes. So, what do you say, Ray? Email from Mark telling me to come out for the millionth member party. What else did the email say? It said that we had to have a business meeting. That Mark and Shaw had played some kind of revenge stunt on Case Equity. And that Manningham was so impressed that he was now making an investment offer that was hard to turn down. So I went to California and I went straight to the new offices. I didn't know whether to dress for the party or for the business meeting. So I kind of dressed for both. But it didn't matter. Why not? Because I wasn't called out there for either one. What were you called out there for? An ambush. Mr. Sadler, hey, look over here. First I thought he was joking, giving me more contracts to sign. But then I started reading. Wait, what is this? Well, uh, as you know, we had some new investors that have come What in. is this? Mr. 
Sam. Mark! Mark! He's wired in. Sorry? He's wired in. Is he? Yes. How about now? You're still wired in? No security. You issued 24 million new shares of stock. You were told that if new investors How came How much along... were your shares diluted? How much were his? What was Mr. Zuckerberg's ownership share diluted down to? It wasn't. What was Mr. Moskowitz's ownership share diluted down to? It wasn't. What was Sean Parker's ownership share diluted down to? It wasn't. What was Peter Thiel's ownership share diluted down to? It wasn't. And what was your ownership share diluted down to? 0.03%. You signed the papers. You set me up. You're gonna blame me because you were the business head of the company and you made a bad business deal with your own company. This is gonna be like I'm not a part of Facebook. It won't be like you're not a part of Facebook. You're not a part of Facebook. My name's on the masthead. You might want to check again. It's because I froze the account? You think we were gonna let you parade around in your ridiculous suits pretending you were running this Sorry, company? Sorry! My Prada's at the cleaners! Along with my hoodie and my fuck you flip-flops, you pretentious douchebag! Security's here. You'll be leaving now? I'm not signing those papers. We will get the signature. Tell me this isn't about me getting into the Phoenix. You... You did it! I knew you did it! You planted that story about the chicken! I didn't plant the story about the chicken. What's he talking about? You had me accused of animal cruelty. Seriously, what the hell's the chicken? And I'll bet what you hated the most is that they identified me as a co-founder of Facebook, which I am. You better lawyer up, asshole, because I'm not coming back for 30%. I'm coming back for every. It's okay, I'm going. Hang on. I just forgot. Here's your $19,000. I wouldn't cash it, though. I drew it on the account you froze. I like sitting next to you, Sean. It makes me look so tough. That's it. That's our show for tonight, people. Chris Gardner. How are you? Good morning. Chris Gardner. Chris Gardner. Good to see you again. Chris Gardner. Pleasure. I've been sitting out there for the last half hour trying to come up with a story that would explain my being here dressed like this. And, and I wanted to come up with a story that would demonstrate qualities that I'm sure you all admire here, like, like earnestness or diligence or team playing to something. And I couldn't think of anything. So the truth is, I was arrested for failure to pay parking tickets. Parking tickets? <laughs> and, and I ran all the way here from the, the Polk station, the police station. What were you doing before you were arrested? I was uh, painting my apartment. Is it dry now? <laughs> I hope so. Jay says you're pretty determined. Oh, he's been waiting outside the front of the building with some 40-pound gizmo for over a month. He said you're smart. I like to think so. And you want to learn this business? Yes, sir, I want to learn this business. Have you already started learning on your own? Absolutely. Jay. Yes, sir. How many times have you seen Chris? You know, I don't know. One too many, apparently. Is he ever dressed like this? No. No. Jacket and tie. First in your class? In school? High school? Yes, sir. How many in the class? Uh, Twelve. It was a small town. <laughs> I'll say. But I was also first in my radar class in, in the Navy, and that was a class of 20. Can I say something? Um, I'm the type of person, if you ask me a question and I don't know the answer, I'm gonna tell you that I don't know. But I bet you what, I know how to find the answer and I will find the answer. 
Is that fair enough? Chris, what would you say if a guy walked in for an interview without a shirt on? And I hired him. What would you say? He must have had on some really nice pants. <laughs> <laughs> Chris, I don't know how you did it dressed as a garbage man, but you really pulled it off in there. Thank you very much, Mr. Twistle. Hey, now you can call me Jay. All right, we'll talk to you soon. All right, so I'll let you know, Jay. You'll, you'll let me know, Jay. What do you mean? Yeah, I'll give you a call tomorrow sometime. And... Wait, wait, what are you talking about? You hounded me for this. You stood here. Listen, there's no salary. No. I was not aware of that. My circumstances have changed some, and I need to be certain that I'll be able to sustain. Okay. Tonight, I swear, I will fill your spot, I promise. Do you know what I'll look like? If you back out, do you know what I'll look like to the partners? Yes, an ass a-hole. Yeah, an ass a-hole. All the way. <laughs> you are a piece of work. Tonight. I am not a destroyer of companies. I am a liberator of them. The point is, ladies and gentlemen, that greed, for lack of a better word, is good. Greed is right. Greed works. Greed clarifies, cuts through, and captures the essence of the evolutionary spirit. Greed in all of its forms. Greed for life, for money, for love, knowledge, has marked the upward surge of mankind, and greed, you mark my words, will not only save Teldar paper, but that other malfunctioning corporation called the USA. Thank you very much.